Did you ever watch Beverly Hillbillies? And the no, you need to watch that. So this is they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly Hills. That is anyway. This is what it looked like. A little bit of a redneck packing job there, but uh, hopefully it'll stay in place. We're gonna, I can hear the Stinky Brothers are excited about going, so we're gonna get them out, load up, and get up there and see how Roy and the guys are doing. It's Thursday morning and we're back at the farm. We spent the night at my mom and dad's. There's just too much chaos here and you can see in the background, uh, there's a lot getting done around here. Interestingly, I can't take this camera in there and film it until I turn their light off because the refresh rate on their light, it must be the same as the shutter speed on this uh, little GoPro that I'm holding. So I can't, uh, all I get is a black bar, but I will update you on what it looks like inside. But, you know, I'd say we're a day or two away from being done here. Finally, the uh, builders are gone. They're on their lunch break, late lunch. We've spent the day going to hardware stores, uh, digging up water lines, putting out every kind of fire you can put out, trying to get this building project done. But we're finally gonna go get into a blind. I would like to have put a tree stand up this afternoon, but it's just, there's nowhere near enough time to get that done. So we're gonna jump into a blind. If you remember uh, in the last episode, we moved one up to a little small corn, corn plot and the wind is perfect for that. It's blowing out of the south, so it's gonna blow our scent right out into that pasture, which I really don't think deer are gonna come from that direction. So we should have a pretty clean uh, entry coming in and, and uh, the wind should be good while we're in there. But uh, we're doing something cool today and uh, we're gonna see how it goes with uh, keeping all four tires on the ground. We've got the, the Tour V guys sent us a couple of these little electric four wheelers to play with. And uh, I'm gonna turn this just a little bit. We'll give you a better view of them in a, in a little while here, but these things are really cool. Um, you know, they're not sponsors, but they were good enough, like I said, to just give us a couple of them to play with because, you know, running everywhere in the four wheeler is pretty, it's pretty easy to do, but you, you're kind of high impact too. And uh, these are super quiet. So we'll try them and play with them and see how they do. I'm sure they'll, you know, they're, they're kind of, they got a little zip to them. So we'll see how little Miss Jordan does with that much power at her fingertips. I tried it out earlier and I think it was about plus or minus eight seconds before I was in the ditch. <laughs> Dad, can you come help me? Yeah. But, no, that's what dads are for, I guess. Uh, and then let's see what else have we got to do. Nothing. I think if we hurry, we can get out of here before those get those guys get back, and uh, we can actually get a hunt in this afternoon. It should be, like I said, you know, it, it's a cool spot. It's a little bit warm today, uh, probably low 60s at this point, and uh, not perfect for this time of the year, but not bad either. I expect we'll see some deer, and uh, hopefully Jordan gets an opportunity at something that's you know, right in front of the blind. So we'll check in when we get up there. We'll see how it works. I think we're probably parked a little too close. We should be someplace behind, but there's that wide open pasture is not a very good place to park anything. Uh, they're picking the corn, so that should probably within the next couple of days, pull the deer through. They do like feeding in that harvested corn. Uh, that's their, they would rather eat the corn on the ground right after the combine goes through than uh, to try to pick it off the stalk. I'm 
saying to that? Well, this is my first time bow hunting out of a blind. I've gone hunted probably a million times. I've shot a few bucks out of blinds before, but it's a lot different than uh, shooting out of a tree or just in the yard because you're, the area that you have available to shoot through is a lot smaller. And the uh, front windows and the redneck blinds, they're not as tall, I guess you would say, as the corner windows. So if you're not careful, you have to kind of stand up a little bit and shoot down and make sure that your sight is in the upper half of the window because your arrow is below your sight. So if your sight's just barely above the bottom edge, your arrow's gonna hit that bottom edge. But if your sight's towards the top of the window, you know you've got plenty of uh, room and freedom below that uh, to make sure your arrow goes through clean and doesn't hit anything. Yeah, and that's the problem when the deer is close. The tendency is just to drop your bow arm and then you don't think about it and uh, you hit the bottom of the window. So, all right, good tip, back to hunting. First time I went hunting and I shot that that uh, little buck and that doe out of the tree um, over on the cabin field. I was in like a bright pink snowsuit. I think I took a nap between the two. Like I shot the buck maybe or the doe first and I fell asleep. I was like six years old. You tapped me on the shoulder like, do you want to shoot another one? I was like, okay half asleep <laughs> reminiscing on past hunts and uh i just remembered that my dad bought me a bb gun my first bb gun and my first poly pocket little doll set on the same day when i was like four at pomida in albia i'll never forget that walked out with like a little pink doll house and a bb gun in the other hand It's been, I suppose, disappointing. Um, you know, whenever you don't see one, it's hard to get too fired up, but it is nice out. and We've had fun talking about, what have we talked about? What animal we'd be. Oh. <laughs> Dad, Dad said he'd be an eagle. No, a golden eagle. A golden eagle. And I said I would be my golden retriever, Bentley. See, the golden eagle would eat the golden retriever. That's not... That's not a good, you know, you gotta be something cool. So this is what we do when nothing shows up, but be back uh, tomorrow. White's Bowhunting Whitetails is brought to you by Day 6 Arrows, Redneck Blinds, Code of Silence Apparel, Fuse Archery, and Hoyt. Well, good morning, guys. It is October 28th. And it's been a foggy morning so far. The air coming off the, the river down below here is slowly rising with the thermals this morning. So it's, it's a really good morning to be in a stand and watch the sun come up over this ridge. It's, there's nothing better. Back in here today after the lucky seven. I'm not even sure if the deer's still alive, but I figured this would be a good observation sit to see if I can at least get my eyes on him. Got in here pretty good, right at first light. I had a buck chasing a doe down below me, grunting, so that's a good sign. And then there's been some deer in the CRP behind me, and right at first light as well, so. It's about 7.30 right now, so still really early. Chose this setup today because it's on a scrape line. Right in front of me, there's this dug road, and these bucks have just been tearing every overhanging branch up on this dug road. So I figured with this east wind, they might be coming off this point with the wind in their face, going in, check, to, check those scrapes.
Né? I got him stuck, Bill. You shot him? I did, and I think it's I think he's oh. I think he's done on video. Wow. That's really exciting. Good for you. On video too. I mean, it's he was at 20 yards and he was quartering a little bit to me and I I put it a touch back, but like I looked at the shot on video and it looks good and I watched him run off about 80 yards, stop, and then he ran off and it sounded like he crashed. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, good for you. What was he doing? Was he coming into a scrape or something? He was running the scrape line. Yeah, he's the only buck I saw on this side of the fence all morning. He was running the scrape line. Uh, oh, wow. man. <laughs> that's such a big deer. He, he was big. Yeah, he's bigger than you, you thought. I know you, you downplayed it on purpose, but that's a really, really big deer. All right, we'll see you there in a little bit. Yep. See you soon. Thank you. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully. Awesome. Yeah, let's pray. <laughs> All right. See you guys. Yeah, it's a really nice deer. He's a giant. <laughs> All right, we'll see you in a little bit. See ya. Well, this is the 15th time I've tried to do this interview closer deal. I don't know. But, like I said, I'm at a loss for words. This has been a morning of all mornings. A beautiful sunrise coming over the ridge and fog coming up and lo and behold this buck came running down the scrape line just like I had envisioned on this southeast wind and luckily enough for me the thermals were rising and brought my thermals back into my face and he, he came right down the trail and he decided to, to turn left like he was gonna jump the fence well I stopped him about 20 yards and shot him and he wheeled and oh, <laughs> this is what you dream of i mean there's nothing better than this there's no better feeling in the world other than knowing for sure he's dead and but i'm gonna get out of the stand now and go pick jordan up and my dad and then uh come back in here and see if we can't find him so let's go so ethan uh, hit that big buck that he was after this morning. It's the 28th and uh, he's gonna come and grab Jordan and then they're gonna go do the recovery. I've got to keep this building going. Unfortunately, I'd love to go with him, but there's so much going on here that I need to give my attention to this. But um, how exciting, I mean, it's a giant buck. You know, we didn't talk about it when Ethan was here filming me because we weren't sure, you know, how much he was gonna be able to hunt the deer, how much time he had, stuff like that. So we didn't really want to get the story started, but um, the story started and ended. Uh, right here and uh, pretty exciting so they're gonna go uh, get that uh, recovered and then uh, we'll uh, show you everything we can on on uh, this buck that Ethan just got well I mean here's that logging road you can see come around so I'm out here with Ethan um, Ethan took a shot at and hit the buck that he's been after so far this season. So I'm out here to cover that recovery. Um, my dad had to stay back at our farm uh, to keep the construction crew kind of moving along because they're only there for today. So trying to get that living quarters wrapped up. So Ethan and I are gonna go out there and uh, look for his buck. Uh, Ethan, do you wanna tell us a little bit about your morning and the deer and your story kind of so far? Yeah, it was a really good morning. It was like everything you dream of. Perfect sun coming up over the ridge, over a big CRP field. And I saw quite a few deer this morning. Right when I got in, I heard some grunting and stuff. But other than that, there really wasn't any deer that came down the trail I expected to besides him. He came in about 818. And, you know, I, I think I might have rattled him in. I can't really tell. I mean, I rattled it at 805. So he could have been coming in, but he also could have just been checking those uh, scrapes. But... We looked at shot, he was quartering too, and it's, I mean, it's not where you, it's not ideal, but it, I think it's liver. And it, like, I probably got some guts in there too. So we gave him about three and a half hours. We're gonna go back in there and check first blood, see what we can find. And uh, hopefully he's at the end of the trail, so. 
Let's go get it done. Standing when I shot him. He turned and he wheeled and he went this way, so we're gonna kinda see if we can find some blood right here. So we've blood trailed about 300 yards and we've had some really good blood and some really not good blood. So I'm not really sure what happened. It obviously looks like one lung and liver for sure. Some guts in there as well. So these deer are tough and we're just gonna keep plugging away. It's been four hours since I shot him, so. <laughs> oh boy, proud of you. <laughs> Bucky Seven's luck ran out today. This is a buck I've been chasing for pretty much just this year. But last year I was down on an internship with Midwest Whitetail. I didn't get the chance to run any cameras, unfortunately. But I had my, my dad run some. And uh, we had this four and a half year old buck on camera. He was a really good deer. Typical Iowa giant whitetail. Well, fast forward to this year, I put cameras out here late because I really wasn't sure if I was going to even hunt this farm. And sure enough, one of the first days this guy was on camera, daylighting with a bunch of does, as proud as can be. I mean, he's hitting a scrape just like he's supposed to. And today, that was the death of him. He was coming in to hit some scrapes and man, I don't even know what to say. I'm at a loss for words. Oh. <sighs> See ya. So we got the whole project finished up finally. It took me two months to frame it, and these guys, and the framing was really good, right guys? Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very good. yeah it was they, really straight. They didn't care for my framing, <laughs> but it took them five days to finish what would have taken me three or four or five months to do. So we are now officially uh, moved into our living quarters, which is gonna make it a lot easier here to hunt this place. This is uh, Roy and the crew, Kios Drywall, and uh, you're not looking for any more work, are you? No, oh, no, really. <laughs> we have too much, man. They have too much work, but... Uh, yeah, well, especially coming with you. Yeah. You know, you always have a little extra things to do. You know, you say, it's, oh, it's one day. No, 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 <laughs> I never did. So anyway, uh, this is it. We're done with this episode. I appreciate the work these guys did. Thanks for joining us this week on Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember... Remember, you always dream big. There it is. <laughs> we got to do that one more time. When I say remember, you guys have to say always dream big. Okay, so okay. try it one more time. Okay, so thanks for joining us this week for Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. We'll see you back here again next week. And remember... Always, always dream big. big. <laughs> that was good.